We wrote a song, I don't even remember where it, when it was, in the 70s sometime. We're sitting and I'm writing it, I'm playing a Fender Rhodes. And, uh, and I come up with a few notes and, I, and, I, and a tune and I say to Doug, you know what, this would be great for Ray Charles. And we sat and we wrote this song called, Is There Anyone Out There? That's not a joke. I mean, is there anyone out there? It's not that. It was, it, it was a song that we sat down and wrote for Ray Charles. I made a demo of it, which was extraordinarily slow, and, uh, and about four and a half minutes long, which was interminably long for a pop song in the, in the 70s. It was a, at least a minute longer than anything else we'd ever had. Uh, and so anyway, we made the demo, make a long story short, we went to Los Angeles to do, doing some stuff with our publishers, and I said to Doug, let's, let's get this to Ray Charles ourselves. So we, we rented a car and we drove to, to Watts, south of Los Angeles. And this is an extraordinarily naive thing to do, and I had no, because being brought up in England, you don't have this innate knowledge of, you know, Harlem in New York, Watts in Los Angeles, and what that means. Those communities don't mix, they, they're quite separate, or they were then. So we didn't think about it. We got in the car, drove to Watts, uh, because Ray Charles had a little company called Orange Records, which was in Watts, right in the middle of Watts. We drove there, and when we got down there, I, I, I looked around us and I thought, this is a very strange place, you know. It was entirely black people everywhere, there wasn't any white people. I even looked at the billboards and the, the cowboy riding the horse smoking a Marlboro saying welcome to Marlboro country was a black guy on the, on the billboards. This was an extraordinary revelation to me, I didn't, I'd never seen it before, didn't think anything of it, found Orange Records, went in, walked in through the door and they were gobsmacked to see Doug and I, two little white guys from England come in they said, can we help? And I said, yeah, I've got a song for Mr. Charles. Is he here? And they said, well, no, he's, he's, not, he's not actually here, but I'll get someone to, to, to talk to you. And they, they went out the back and got Big D. Owen, who was at that time head of A&R for Orange. He came out, it's a ma massive, big old rock and roll singer. I was thrilled to see him. And he came out and he said, uh, you better come in. And he took our acetate. He put it on the turntable, and this was a very slow song. Very slow. It took probably half a minute to get to the first line of lyric. Anyway, he only got it. He only got 15 seconds in <laughs> before he took it off, and he said, "Thank you very much for coming, Mr. Charles. Will not be recording this song." <laughs> so that was the end of that, and we went away, and I. We got back and crestfallen in the car, drove back up to our publishers in Hollywood. And we walked in and said, you know, you know we've just been down to Watts and seen, and, you, and, the, and Alan, <laughs> not Alan Freed, Lance Freed, said, you did what? You went where? What did you do that for? And we said, well, we were, you know, Ray Charles. Anyway, they, they told us how stupid we, we'd been. And, uh, you know, we were lucky to escape with our lives. And you're never going to get a song recorded down there, but like that, you know. So we gave up. They submitted it via one of their black specialists, black music specialists, and it was turned down. And the following year they submitted it again and it was turned down. And five years went by. And suddenly I got a call from this guy called Shelley Weiss, who said, I'm now working for AM. I've just found your catalogue and this great song in here. It would be marvellous for Ray Charles. I said, yeah, tell me about it. You know, it's been, it's been turned down for five years. He said, leave it with me. And he went out and got a, a braille lead sheet done. He ran across Ray Charles at some event, said, I've got this song for you. Uh, have a feel of this, you know, sort of thing. And... Uh, <laughs> Ray Charles said I want to hear it and they played it to him and he recorded it one week later. So five years it took and it's still the same song it's just that he'd never heard it up until then 